I am John Todd, and this tape is being made in a prison cell in South Carolina. It is very late at night. All the inmates are locked down in their cells, but you will still hear noises off and on. And if the guards come by, I have to stop and be very quiet. The reason for this tape is that I have been framed and put in prison by order of the U.S. Senator from South Carolina, Storm Thurmond. I'll go into all the reasons for that and what happened to me. And only recently, in fact just about a week and a half ago, did I find out how it was really accomplished. As I started to say, the reason for this tape is to get the word out about where I'm at. I've been in custody almost four years now. I've been in a prison cell for three years. And that time is very closely guarded secret by the government, by the Illuminati, and definitely by the conspirators. The word of what has happened to me has not gotten out of the state of South Carolina. Here you have religious magazines that are run by the Illuminati, speakers who are members within the organization, or collaborators who have been bought by them over the years. Many of them would consider themselves to be a personal enemies of mine because of exposes which came out about them by me in the 70s and early 80s. Yet, not one of them has said a word, although they all know about it for fear that the true believers that are out there will find out what has happened to me. One of the things that seems to be very frightening to Christians is that such a thing could actually take place. Many who knew I was innocent could not believe that I had been found guilty. Not so much that because it just wasn't there. It didn't take place, so therefore even the manufactured evidence wasn't even there. They just couldn't believe that a child of God in this country could go to prison. I want to say this now before I go on. Whoever receives a copy of this tape, I'm asking you to make a copy of copies and get the word out. Make phone calls. Let people know what has happened to me. Let them know that they can be of service to get me out of here. This is what is most feared about putting me in here, that the word will get out. Let me tell you what all has happened here. We need to go back to 1987 in Columbia, South Carolina, where I was living. I had been hurt. I had been doing labor, construction work, carpenter work for several years. I had stopped speaking publicly after my divorce to the woman who had stood beside me for years and years and years. Headquarters, give me a polygraph immediately in the form of a screen, I can assure you. Not a statement, the slut agent. A Lieutenant Carlton Metal, who is now a captain, who was made captain for three days after I was convicted, over-promoted, promoted over people in front of him, screamed out loud, No, we're not going to give you a polygraph. That was their stance all the way through. I took a polygraph after my conviction. I paid for the polygraph. But it's not admissible in court. Immediately I knew this whole thing was a frame. I wasn't sure what they were up to, but I let it go. The solicitor said he wanted to have my apartment searched for evidence of the rape, and that he could get a search warrant, but they would prefer that I allow them to search. Well, I said, I have an attorney who is representing me in the lawsuit. He is also a criminal attorney. If you allow me to call him, you allow me to ask his advice, and he says, yes, I will allow you to do it. They really didn't have a choice in this matter. I was asking for my attorney. They were supposed to. They took me in the hospital downstairs to the security room. I didn't know this at the time, but out of the 17 arresting officers that were sled, their five were lieutenants in the room with me out of the 26 lieutenants, the state. That's unheard of. Plus the head solicitor. It gets better. They take me into a room. The solicitor calls my attorney. They proceeded to box up three 30-gallon plastic trash bags and four boxes of material. Nothing except three knives that they claimed they were trying to find the knife which was used in the raid. I showed them where all my knives were and some business stationaries with the publishing company. Other than the knife, nothing that went out of there was used during the trial. Nothing was used except what I had just said. Everything else was business material, printing, concerning my past ministry or the ministry I was involved in, which was the newsletter. The whole time I was there, I was not questioned about sexual assault, as they put it. I was only questioned about the Christian underground. I want to stop and explain that. There is, though some of you might find it shocking, there is an underground in the United States, a Christian underground. It was formed over the trials in Nebraska, where Christians, pastors, ministers of the church were sent to prison, where we started seeing non-passed laws about child abuse being put into effect by the federal and state governments without ever being passed as law. Children were being taken from their parents without a chance for the parents to be allowed to speak in the trial. All it took was some child psychologist saying, I suspect child abuse, blah, blah, blah. 
we started seeing how 90% of the people being tried were fundamentalist Christians, so an underground was formed. It contained Christian survivalists, but it contained everyday people also. And all they wanted was where these safe houses were, where these places of refuge were, what the underground conductors, who were they? That's all they were asking me, and yet nothing was in South Carolina. So it was out of their jurisdiction, so I knew they were asking for the federal government. It was taken from there to SLED, and for the first time I was questioned concerning the so-called rape. I realized you would have to be arrested to understand the shock you go through. I was just numb. But as my head started clearing, and I realized that they held in their hands evidence that they had took from my apartment, which would clear me, I told them. I also told them about my whereabouts that night. I told them of people they could go question, and here's their statement. It is not our job to go question witnesses. What will prove your innocence? While I was at SLED headquarters, the solicitor who had left us after we had left the apartment went and held a press conference. This was his story. I was arrested for one rape. I was suspected in three, maybe as many as 80. That's right. Family members on their way home from work at 5.30 in the evening were hearing this one on the radio. Never before was anybody that wasn't a murderer even given this much publicity. And even before in the history of SLED had a person who was charged only with criminal sexual assault ever been investigated or charged by SLED. Before I was even booked in the jail, I realized that these folks did not believe I was guilty. They were only interested in something else. I wasn't sure quite yet what. The next morning I was brought before a state magistrate for a ball hearing and to be arranged. I was denied bail in the following. Now listen to this. The solicitor tells the magistrate the following. I'm not a resident of South Carolina, but he had just searched my apartment. I had several businesses in South Carolina, and I had lived here for years. Further, they said I had no residence in South Carolina, and yet they had just searched it. They said I had a passport, and they were worried I'd flee the country. The passport had been taken from my apartment, and had expired on that very day of my birthday of 1967, and they knew it. The next statement was that I had no visible means of support, and yet they knew that I did. And the last one was that I had no family members in South Carolina, and yet I had children right here. As I tried to tell the magistrate this was all incorrect, he wouldn't hear it. I had not yet realized that I was on the front cover of the state newspaper. Now, the state newspaper is the newspaper in Columbia. It had a co-owned newspaper called The Record, which does not exist now. They have combined them. The newspaper print whatever the authorities want them to print in the state. The interesting thing in this was that it started to go into my military records. Now the Illuminati and the collaborators in the Christian church have led to discredit me for years. Mainly they have said that I have lied about my participation in the military, what I was involved in, that I was in Vietnam or any of this. During the next several days the state became very upset at the U.S. military because the U.S. military said I was involved in a military group in Vietnam called Phoenix and that all the members who were in Phoenix, their military records were sealed, and in Langley, Virginia, with the CIA. That is what I have said for years and years and years. And after all of this, thousands and thousands of dollars are paid to the collaborators within the Christian church, to the Illuminati. Collaborators and plants have put out about 